Hi guys, what is in the back? What, this is my little, this is my place. You don't like it? I got the stick. You got balls of yarn. It's my little set. Do you like it? Do you hate it? This is not an event. This is not a podcast. It's just a little show I wanna do every week and see if you guys like it. And if you like it, you like it. If we don't, we'll stop doing it, whatever. But my idea was just to have something as a consistent little show that we can have every week. And if it's a little scuffed, it's a little scuffed. But I'm excited to have you guys and I'm excited to put a little effort into it and hopefully you like it. Today, our guest is Will Neff. He is not here yet because we have to start with our news recap. Okay, everybody, we've got some news. Two weeks ago, the Streamer Awards happened. You guys know about the Streamer Awards, right? What some of you don't know is about the bathroom situation. At the Streamer Awards, the bathroom flooded. The urinals specifically in the men's bathroom flooded. Nandre was one of the first investigators on the scene after the event, tweeting out that he was going to figure out who pooped in the urinal. There is a urinal shitter out there. Now, I've done a few investigative research. However, we've got to look at all of the evidence on the table before we come to a conclusion. And I'll tell you here on Late Night with Cutie, we've got the insider scoop on the poop. The first thing that happened is Nandre did investigations himself, which led to this. I have my number one suspect nailed on my board. But can I confirm to you that Dan Clancy is the urinal shitter? I can't. Yet. There is only one possible way for me to 100% confirm that Dan Clancy pooped in the urinal at the Streamer Awards. And that is by doing a taste test. So obviously, a lot of investigative research was put into that, but before we point fingers at Dan Clancy, I need to talk about this case of evidence. Yeah, should I get fucking shit hammered at the Streamer Awards and take my cock out and yell and get blacklisted and never see my friends again ever? Yep, 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 yep. yep, yep. All right, I got you, boys. Yep. But it's like, there's nothing stopping me from doing that. Like, I could wait for the camera to get on me and just take my dick out. <laughs> What do you think Will's reaction would be? Would he join you in solidarity? No, oh my God, everyone would. <laughs> I wouldn't, or do you think I'm actually contemplating doing it? It's just insane that I could do that, you know? You could just start shitting, dude. I could never do that. I would like to reference a quote used by Wake Wilder where he said, you could just start shitting, dude. I could just start shitting, dude. Yeah, it's a bit of an issue. It's a bit of an issue. He is tall enough, number one. I assume the taller you are, the, the bigger your poop is, I think. And it had to be a lot of poop in order to fill the urinal. It's not like I made it up. It's not like I put the words in his mouth. However, that is a case of evidence that we do need to add to our overall investigative reports on this situation. Now, listen, there's a lot to look at here. Like I said, we do have more evidence from Daily Dose himself reporting from the floor. So I don't know what happened with the bathroom situation, but the bathroom situation is so bad that they sent us to these back... Hey, Quackity, I'm, I'm, I'm making a video right now for Twitter. They said, they, what happened to all the bathrooms? They're overflowing. They're all overflowing. There's gonna be like a fucking Where is like a club over here? So yeah, uh, streamer award situation. Um, all the bathrooms are overflowing. We are in, it's like the, the back room of a club. I don't know what's going on. I just think it's interesting that Daily Dose clearly wanted to engage in more of a conversation with Quackity and Quackity fled the scene as fast as possible. I don't want you guys to make up your mind too quickly because we also have this. Hi. Oh my God, sorry. I have like diarrhea, cold sweats because I had some cheese. Your honor. I don't know if I personally need to speak to this. However, if I were her and I needed to evacuate my bowels because I have diarrhea cheese sweats, I wouldn't use the female restroom because potentially I wouldn't be able to make it into a toilet. I'd be panicking, I'd be running. 
And you know what I would do? I would, I would, I would pull my pants down and I'd plop it in a urinal as fast as I could. And I think that is another option here that we haven't fully considered. But then I saw this. Last night I found myself back in a war show. But I had to leave midway through, I had to go. Cause I had to pee, oh no, but will you know? They closed the bathroom because you're a nose. Not great shit in the urinal. Not great shit in the urinal. Waiting in the line like I had to go. I did feel like the original tweet might have been a bit of misdirection, but there was a lot of evidence stacking up to him. So don't worry, here at QDC News Network, featured on Late Night with Cutie, I reached out to the venue. As you guys know, I said, hey, do you have anything you could share with me? And lucky for us, they did reply to my email. They said, hey, cutie, thank you for holding the stream rewards is one of our favorite events. I apologize again for the issues with the bathrooms. We checked the security footage and this is the photo we found. Please let us know if we can be of further assistance. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we should address the fact that there's a camera directly in the male bathroom stalls. I don't think that's not an us problem because regardless, we had the evidence that we needed and we did catch him in 4K precisely. So Drake's in chat, at least now we know, and Nandre will never be invited to anything ever again. So that is locked down. For those of you who don't know, we had sad news this past week. Korean telecommunications watchdog said Friday it slapped a fine of $327,000 on US live streaming video platform Twitch, which suspended its video on demand service in the country. Devastating news that is taking over us. I'm not sure how Twitch is gonna pay that fine. That seems like a lot of money. Maybe what they could do in order to pay that fine is actually get all of the Korean streamers that no longer have jobs and just let them go live again. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe the subs would pay for that 300K. I think that is my plan of action. I hope they take it. That is my advice to Twitch.tv. Now, in other news, FaZe Banks is officially back and it's time for FaZe to finally phase up their stock prices. If you guys don't know, FaZe Banks is back as the owner of the FaZe Clan, baby boys and baby girls. And if you're not phased up right now, I don't wanna and hear it. Bad news is as soon as he was hired, everybody was fired. This is true. This is a tweet from him. So officially, FaZe came back and they have more layoffs than anybody else at this point. So I think we should find a new CEO, FaZe out. In other news, everybody, some people don't know this, but I learned that Your Rage had an intruder this past week. This is Your Rage's backyard. If you guys don't know, Your Rage Gaming, famous kick streamer, famous Twitch streamer at one point. This is his backyard and that man's just climbed on over like he was Nandre heading to the urinals and he starts playing basketball. He just wanted to play some ball. He wants to play some ball. The doggies hear about it. They're like, oh no, what's going on here? We didn't, who's that man? What's happening? They go out there, they're crazy. They go to get your rage's attention. They're like, yo, where are my man's at? There's someone in the backyard. <laughs> yeah, you all weren't using it. It's a lot of dogs. I didn't know your rage had an animal sanctuary. He's my new favorite streamer. Look at this. So he's like, doggies, what's going on? And then he's like, oh shit, that is someone in my backyard. He's like, let me put my glasses on. And then he's like, oh no, I definitely saw someone in my backyard. And his dogs were like, yeah, we saw him. And then the dog said, no, we'll get him. We'll take care of that. <laughs> they took care of that. Anyway, folks, we learned do not play basketball in your age's backyard. This message goes out to Ludwig, who keeps breaking into your age's backyard to have his slurry of friends playing basketball. It's not cool. He barely made it out. Isn't that crazy? Pretty cool, interesting. You guys, see, we cover, we cover the most important news here, especially this one. Jinxie started a new podcast. He's had Queso on and he's had 
Moist Critical on, and he's just gonna take over the Joe Rogan experience. You're gonna have the Jinxy experience. It's gonna consist of him, hopefully, being funnier than the rest of the streamers on the entire platform, but also putting down Squeaks to where he belongs. If you guys do not know, Squeaks at the Streamer Awards threw a temper tantrum when he did not want win. It was real. It was true. And the Jinxie fans went after him and they said, who is that guy? And I had to do a lot of research to even figure this out because I did not know who that guy was. He's got a bit of an ego, but Jinxie stays on top and we're really, really excited to check out his podcast. And Jinxie, if you ever want w female representation, you, I'll do it. That'll work. <laughs> Stop saying who Megalol to me. Stop saying who are you to me. I'm cool, I swear to God. I'm actually, I'm cool. In very exciting, nice news, Peach Jars hit the streets this week. I don't like hitting the streets. To give out life advice. She hit the streets to give out life advice to people passing by in order to raise money to Alveus Animal Sanctuary. If you haven't seen this, she got some of the best life advice that I've ever gotten. Free advice. Here's some free advice for charity. I don't give a fuck how beautiful you are. I will later. I got a new vibrator. Thank you. Free advice. Anyway, I mostly included this in our news report so I could also put out a bat signal. Peach jars, if you are available, I can be. I will never be that cool, and I wish I could be. And our final news of the night, because I do believe that our guest is pulling up. This is going to require some research on our end, so come with me as we dive into this. Twitch and Kick have been banned in Turkey as of February 23rd, likely relating to the gambling content. As you guys know, Turkey is a very important place for us on Twitch.tv and for certain streamers in particular. And without pointing any fingers, I noticed this today. Amaranth tweeted out that she has gotten unverified and unpartnered on Twitch with an eye emoji. And you might be thinking, cutie, what does that have to do with Twitch being banned in, in Turkey? Well, I have to say this. Today, Turkey has reportedly unbanned Twitch. I'm not saying that there's a lot of people in Turkey that are really big fans of Amaranth's content, but I am telling you that Amaranth lost her Twitch partnership, got unverified, Turkey become unbanned on Twitch, and now Amaranth is back to being partnered. I'm not saying that it has anything to do with anything. I just think that maybe we should look into it. I just think maybe we should look into it. This is investigative research. I don't know, it could be related. I'm just here asking questions. We might have to cover this next week. We're gonna have to cover it next week, I think. All right, everybody, I am going to be right back. Our guest is here, thank you. Give it up! <laughs> we don't have an audience. For Will Neff, he's here. Yeah. Do you like it? This, yeah. I mean, this feels so strange that we're the only ones here. I know. <laughs> feels a little bit like a zombie apocalypse show. Yeah. Wow! Oh! Hey, everybody. Hello. Wow. Ta-da! You like the set? It's gorgeous. Thank you. There's a lot. It's like kind of mystic. Thank you. I describe myself as mystic. Do you? <laughs> no, I, know I don't know what I'm doing with myself. I like the pillows. Thank you. Well, welcome. Looks like I'm hiding a boner, but I'm not. I, I need to untangle this cord so you, chat doesn't fall down one more time. Really professionals over here, I'll be honest. This reminds me of what? Holy drip. They do like your outfit. Great outfit today, Will. Thank you. Little Yeah, show it, show it Japanese off. Japanese swag, and then this is a one of one heavy black. Coat that got gifted by who? Like quite a bit. Uh, heavy Black. Oh, who's Heavy? What's that? Heavy Black is a brand. Then the necklace is a Chainsaw Man necklace from Digital Monster and uh, bracelets MXDVX. Wow. I got this jacket from Kohl's. Nice. <laughs> Dress Thank for you. Last yeah. Week. And I got this shirt from the Instagram ad. Yeah. Yesterday I, I loaned you a sweatshirt. Yes. And you immediately went to mop up a puddle with the sleeve. Yes. And then you looked to me and you said, you have nice stuff. I said, mark. is this nice? And I went, yeah, I like to, I like to buy not much clothing, but clothing mm -hmm. I really enjoy and wear it a bunch of times. Did you bring a book? Oh, because you were in the car. Yeah, I was in the car for an hour and 10 minutes. I was, I, uh, I was I love LA. Flowers of Evil. This uh -huh. is the first 
book of flowers of evil i watched the show and i really it really kind of resonated with me wow so i'm reading all the books now it's kind of about a young man's struggle with being a being a pervert oh. and <laughs> kind of hating himself for that cool and finding the balance between like being all right with being a pervert and understanding that it doesn't make you a bad person do you relate to that yes oh <laughs> yes i do <laughs> Uh, well, I have good news for you. So how this show works, I've got you for the next two-ish hours. Okay, cool. We're going to do an interview portion sure. here with the help of chat. We're going to be answering questions from the chat, as in you are going to be answering questions from the chat, and okay. I will help support you and hear you and listen to you. Awesome. And then we're going to be playing a game. All right, I'm ready. Do you Whatever like you it need. or are you sad? Why would I be sad? I'm here for Do you have any you feedback need. so far? Uh, no, I mean, this is so comfy. I'm just here to do a good job for you. Great. I am your vessel. I'm here to Great. dance. Great. Okay, everybody, here we go. All right, chat. You guys have the job of asking the questions. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go right over here. I have a robot we're going to be using. Mm, I love robots. Do you? Big fan of robots. Oh, I didn't know this. I mean, I know, I don't think, I didn't think your doll was a robot. I thought it was just a doll. Is it a robot? What doll? Your art piece. Oh, no, that's not a... She's not a robot. <laughs> she's art. You're struggling to know what she is, it sounds like. Well, she's an art piece. Okay, yeah. Um, well, we use a robot mm. they, to ask questions, and I hope that my awkwardness is charming. Okay, it is. Thank you. You're on the first episode, so it's the worst one, but it also that's, means I trust you the most. That's okay. Yeah, dude, I, I kind of figured I was guinea pig a little bit for this. Why? People love it. Because you, because when you asked me, you went, you want to be on my show? It's the first episode. And you said it like that. I meant like it's the first episode, like, frick. Like, it's the first episode, I'm choosing you to be the first. You, you never get, like, you, I know you have a complex with being chosen. Do, yeah? Yeah. I mean, not so much recently. And, oh. But... Never mind, then, well, fuck you. I've tried to be nice. You chose me, and I'm here. I did, I chose you. And you know what? I'm gonna take it as a compliment. It was supposed to be, but I also trust you enough that I knew it would. It was this, it's gonna be good. this is the best I've got. It's gonna be very, I like it. Thanks. The set is nice, it's nice than Fear and Set. It is nice than Fear and Set. Um, okay, guys, use hashtag ask okay. to get a question in for Will, and then I am going to be, we're gonna oh. be, I'm gonna be throwing those questions at you. Okay. Do you like it? Have you ever done this before? No. Really? No. I feel like you talk to your chat like a normal human a lot. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, which some people don't. They just talk to them like a bunch of babies. No, I talk to my, I, I, I hold my chat to a high standard is what I would say. What does that mean? Um, I don't, hmm, how do I put this? I think that I will make jokes that I know if you interpret me with any kind of charitable interpretation, you won't be negative about it. Because I say some things that are a little, eh. I'll make some jokes that are a little, eh. Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're gonna get canceled. No, I don't know if I will. Really? I don't People think so. People know you're joking? I think I'm just a pretty good dude at the end of the day. Oh. Yeah, but sometimes they don't care if you're a good dude. They just want, they just want, they just want to get you. Yeah, I also keep to myself. I think that helps. Yeah, that does help a lot. That does, yeah. that does help a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. you did just join an org. That's not really keeping to yourself. <laughs> no, true. <laughs> it's not, but you know, it's no, fine. No, sex fine. cult. Yeah, you did join a sex cult. Mm -hmm. um, all right, this is exciting. I'm going to see what Are those people... all questions? Yeah. Oh my God. Um, but you can't look at them. Okay. Yeah, they have to be a subscribe sub, sub, subscribers. Okay. Okay, this will be a fun one. And you might, the thing is, is you might have already answered some of these questions. Sure, I'll answer them for the first time here. But you're going to no answer what. them for the first time here no matter what. Sure. Um, you talked about this a little bit on the Patreon episode, I think, okay. of Fear and one time. But do you miss playing Donna? Yeah, uh, I miss playing all uh, my characters. I I miss doing improv comedy quite a bit. Uh, Donna's gonna come back, but as you know, all these things take time to build. They do and set take up. time. They want your mic closer to your mouth. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I just looked uh, down. I just got their feedback. All these things take time to build and set up. Here, I'll put it on my shirt. And uh, Donna has kind of fallen by the wayside with a lot of other projects recently, and so hopefully I can bring her back uh, soon. I think she will be an OTK show. 
Oh. Um, but, you know, is Donna. That a, is that a leak skis? No, I've been talking about it. We've just been working on it. It's just I, I have so many oars in the water right now. And um, now that uh, my hot sauce is like done and I have that running, by the way, people love the hot sauce. Yeah. How many bottles of the hot sauce did you have? How many have I gone through already? Yeah. 3,000. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's crazy. Yeah. So, when how did you do the hot sauce? Like, why did you do the hot sauce? I don't know this. I don't know the um, story behind it. I'll tell you. Uh, so I don't. I'm not big on just products for the sake of making products. That's never really been my thing. Um, the first merch drop I ever did, I did a cut and sew item, which was fucking brutality, and it took me almost a year mm -hmm. to design and then make it with my friend, and so. I'm never really in the interest of making just things to make money. Um, but uh, about 10 years ago, I was in Virginia Beach and I got really, really drunk on uh, July 4th. And I went to a bar and I was eating with my friend who was kind of like the mayor of VB, unofficial mayor, just a real party animal. And I tried some, <laughs> I tried some hot sauce uh, at this restaurant and I was like, that's the best hot sauce I've ever had in my life. And mm -hmm. he was like, oh dude, that's Jimmy. He makes hot sauce out of his garage. He's a VB legend, dude. And I was like, oh, and it was called Speedy's Hot Sauce. And uh, when I moved to LA, I started ordering it because he set up a website from his website, Speedy's, and I ate it for the next 10 years. I've been eating, what? This, I've been eating this same hot sauce. And for my money, I, I do think it's the best hot sauce in the world. Really? Yeah. What does it taste like? Because I don't like it's, sauce. So he has, I think, like seven, eight different flavors now. Uh -huh. But mine is a variation of his original flavor, which is peach and habanero. Uh, oh, okay. So it's a very okay. citrusy hot sauce. And it's more of like a sauce than it is a hot sauce. Oh. Um, but you might like it. It's it's sauce. It's a sauce. Uh, so I would eat it on stream and people would be like, I've never seen that hot sauce before. There are a lot of people who are very adamant about two things I found out, uh -huh. fragrances and hot sauce. I always really? get asked about those things, yeah. So they'd go, what is that? I'd tell them about Speedy's and Speedy's website was very kind of rudimentary. So every time I would mention it, it would crash his website. Whoa. Um, and uh, also he would get all these order forms saying like, Shouts out to Will Neff, Will Neff. Oh, so, that's funny. So he reached out to me at my business email and was like, I don't know who the f you are and I don't know what the f you do. Oh my God. But you keep crashing my website and thank you for that. Oh, because that's a nice. lot of people are ordering the sauce. And I was like, oh, no worries, man. And we started talking and I think he checked me out and like watched me one night and really kind of liked what I did. And then he reached out to me and was like, would you ever want to do a flavor together? Oh, I was like, wow. That, that would be my dream. So yeah. we, we went through the whole setup of, you know, making a bottle, a label, a flavor, getting it approved by like the Food, food and Drug Administration, yeah, getting, the getting all the um, caloric information and, and, you know, went through that entire process, which is a doozy. And when we got done, I was like, all right, let's get it out there. So we got it out there. We did the first run. I donated every cent I made to my artist, uh, Matt Stupid Art, uh -huh. who I'd wanted to give the him pillows. from the mutt from the pillows. We're gonna sell pillows one of these days. And now we're on the fourth run of the hot sauce, which will go live in the next few days. Really? Yeah. Wow. So each time you do it is a thousand? Thousand bottles, and this is probably the last. Um, time I will do these size bottles, which are like the normal hot sauce uh -huh. bottles. I think people are people are saying they're going through the sauce in like a day or two days. Jesus, people. Cut, yeah, they're blowing through it. So we're gonna do Methuselah bottles, which are like twenty, thirty dollar bottles of like like a. Jet. Oh my god. Yeah, that'll last you a while. What lot the while. hell? Yeah, so it's kind of just become this like pro passion project, and I try and I try and like bookmark everything I make on the hot sauce as like money that I will put back into my stream or my community in some way. Okay. Yeah. So do you think, do you think you have a long, like, you know how like Mr. Beast is doing like candy and Pokey's got her cookies and sure. Prime. Do you have a long-term goal with the sauce? Um, the sauce, it, it was such an impossible dream when we started that I don't think I have really higher goals. Uh, something that would be incredible is my family already has a honey brand and we're carried in. Oh, that would be cool. We're carried in Meyer and we're carried what in. What if you did like a honey hot sauce? Yeah, we, we were talking about a hot honey, but I'd love to like be carried in, in like Meyer or. Grocery stores? Gordon Food Service, somewhere in the Midwest that like my family could go 
and be like, that's that's my family member's hot sauce. Yeah, so how does Speedy, is, like, is there a way for him to grow that so much? We, we've been talking about that, and I think, like, I, I don't want to pressure him because he's, like, a small business owner, and yeah. he's making a lot of money through this, but I don't want him to ever feel like he has to do anything. But we've started talking about taking some of the money I've made and giving him ability to scale his project, which would involve an automatic bottler, an automatic oh, wow. labeler, yeah. and some things that would allow him so to So is he up. literally funneled a bottle? <laughs> yeah, dude, he's, he's got a big vat in his That's garage. Crazy. and he's yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, back to the beginning, you do want to bring back Donna. I do want to bring back <laughs> Donna, yeah. <laughs> We're back, we always come back. Um, and OTK is going to help you do that. I believe so. I know they want to produce something with me. That's what I would like to do. Um, but I have a few other projects I'm working on. I'm working on a D&D &D show. Oh, wow. Um, is it going to be live? Live. And then we're going to use, we're going to try and use augmented reality. Oh, wow. And, Complicated. And have like basically um, versions of everybody's character that will be like a token. I don't know if you play D&D, &D, but I'd love to have you in the campaign if you'd ever do it. I've never played it because I think I would get bored. Well, what if you could see everything that was happening? Maybe I wouldn't. There you go. Maybe if there were snacks. <laughs> that's that's the <laughs> ask. Yeah. You, okay, as a talent, you gotta you gotta price yourself <laughs> way higher than snacks. I just, but they've gotta be like good, like boom chicka pop. They can't just be like. I mean, smart we, pop. We can do that. We can really? get the boom chicka pop. I'm gonna move this slightly because I keep banging my big he ass feet. With my table. No, I just got these. I've got potions big ass silly on it. shoes. You on like there. my potions? There's some good looking potions. Thanks. They're just water with food coloring. Potion seller. I forgot to turn on. Oh, I guess I only have candles over there. That's for when we play a game later. Chat doesn't know about it. It's gonna be fun. Oh god. It's gonna be fun. Oh god. Okay. Okay. Um. All right. Well, next question. Uh, do you like this? <laughs> I feel insecure. I like this. Okay. This is great. It's kind of like a getting to know you. I, I just, I get, well, because the thing is, is like people, I think the thing is, if, if you don't watch you every day, there's might be tidbits you've yeah. shared about yourself. And so this can be a good go-to recoup what's going on with Will Neff type thing. You know? Yeah. He hates I me. love it. I don't hate it. He hates me. You're being self-conscious. I love you. I am. Ooh, that one. You can't look. I just saw one question that was, do it, fart. <laughs> yeah, see, I skipped those ones. I don't even know what There's that means. There's another one that says show hole. You're, you are... Um, Ooh, yeah, that's my community. Yeah, yeah, it does So uh, while like you're it. looking for a question, uh -huh. I'll just tell you what that is. Um, we've started this thing in my community where people will send me really heartfelt messages, and then at the end, they'll say show whole. Wow. Because like someone got me once upon a time where they're like, you've really got me out of a dark place. Like, thanks so much. Now show your butthole. And from there, wow. this mighty oak has grown where <laughs> I get sexually harassed at the end of really nice messages. Oh, that's cool. No, that's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure really cool. Yeah, yeah I yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. um, all right, your next one is, what is your favorite acting job? Because if people don't know you, you come from an acting background. Yeah. What is the fa what is my favorite acting job that I've ever had? Yeah, that you've ever had. Oh, man. Um, what is the favorite acting job? Uh, I did it. My, my favorite one I ever did was I, I uh, did a piece with my buddy Henry Lovner while I was still at BuzzFeed. It was one of the few like narrative things we ever got to do together, and it was a it was a movie about short, or a short film about a guy uh, living with body dysmorphia. Oh, interesting! And just kind of how it's like fucking up his life, and I played the guy with body dysmorphia, and I feel like so I, I so seldom get to do any kind of char character that's serious at all, but I really enjoyed that. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, you don't you don't do auditions anymore, right? No. You don't. No. You never want to ever again. Um, the world of film is unfair and it's full of nepotism and it is, it's brutal. Is there I, almost every actor have like a family tree you can trace back to know somebody? Yeah. Really? I would say, I would say like 50% of Hollywood is related to someone. Um, wow. But uh, it's interesting, like I, I think the really nice thing about streaming is it gives you more 
production ability and like that's what I would use clout for, right? I wouldn't use clout to like get into a nightclub. I would use clout to make more and bigger stuff and to to like assure the the confidence of like brands and creators that I am like a safer bet. Like I have gotten to read for a lot of voice acting roles because I am a streamer. Oh really? Yeah. That's that cool. That I would have never got to read. I got to read for some crazy shit. And I didn't get it, but but you get a you, they reach out to you. Because yeah, of it. yeah, yeah. Some huh. some major shows that I was like, I cannot believe I'm reading for this. Weird. So, uh, I will keep trying. I think the voice acting route is solid. I I got to do my first Adult Swim show. Um, with when? Uh, Lord Spew. I didn't know this. Yeah, yeah. It's still being oh. animated right now. Um, Blake Anderson. You're allowed made, to talk about it. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. That. He's a friend. Um, so uh, I'm going to be in a, an Adult Swim show coming up uh, called Fist Head. And uh, hopefully we we grow that out and do more That'd acting. That'd be cool. I would love to do more acting. I'd love to do more uh, filmmaking. But, you know, like I, I was in a film that was in South by Southwest two years ago and won an audience prize. I did acting in that. Um, and then I was in another film by the same director. And uh, I wrote two films that were sold in Hollywood but never adapted. And uh, God, that's demoralizing. Oh, it was the worst feeling yeah. you could ever imagine. You're so excited, and then you're so deflated. Dude, we, I, I, went, I like celebrated. I like went yeah. to the mountains, and I was like, I've done it. Yeah. I've made it in Hollywood, baby. There's no looking back. And I was wrong, stupid, dumb. Um, and uh, yeah, I would just love to, I think I'm gonna start producing feature length films though. Why? With, with Sear and Phil, Finn. I think we're just gonna like, well, I'll leak it well, to you guys. We're gonna do a Kickstarter soon because of the intro video. Everybody liked it so much. And I think we're just gonna like kickstart like a minuscule budget, like 20 grand for a film and then just disappear for like two months and film and edit. That's cool. And then just come back with a feature. And. So if you do something like that, because I think about it, because the only other person that I know that's really into film is Nick, who I used to live with. Yeah. And he... Falco. Yeah, he has a dream of making a movie, too. Um, I know, he, and he's enormously talented. I'd love to work with him. Yeah, he's insane. Yeah. He's insane. Um, and I never really thought... I never really understood how you make money making movies until I realized that movies... And I wonder if this is out of touch, because I'm a little out of touch when it comes to movies. A little. Uh, sure. Do you think, do you treat movies when you make them like an like an investment at the idea of like, I'm going to spend half a million dollars making this movie at the chance that Warner Brothers buys it or Netflix buys it for uh, a million? Yeah, I think, do you, are you asking for me or are you asking for filmmakers? Filmmakers. Yeah, I think that is a lot of times what you're going to do. I think a lot of independent filmmakers, what they'll do is target festivals. Okay. Like can South by Southwest, South Sundance. South by Southwest, Sundance. And then they'll go um, show their film there. And the part of the reason they target those uh, and don't do distribution first is a lot of them actually have very kind of insidious rules where I know South by, it's like if you've shown your film anywhere before South by, you cannot show your film at South by. Really? Yeah. So that's why oh a my lot gosh. of that's why a lot of independent filmmakers will target those for the release. Um, and then from there, you know, if someone important sees your film or if there's some big reaction to your movie, then you can get distribution or someone might buy your film. Um, and like, you know, there's there's crazy success stories. Like the one I always think of is the Duplass brothers. I don't know Mark what that is. Mark Duplass was in the show, um, oh, f uh, the football show, uh, The League. He was in the, the league. league, and he was like a relatively successful comedy actor, and he directed a, sh uh, a movie called Creep, where he and his friends over the course of like a year filmed the movie on like a JVC handy cam, okay. like the cheapest camera, and it was all found footage, and Creep went insane. Really? I, I think it was yeah, a two, chat's freaking out about it. It was a $280 movie, I think, and it ended up making like- 280 Thousand? No, two hundred and eighty dollars. Period. That's how much they spent on it. That's how much they spent on it. They used like a, <laughs> a cabin that someone owned. They had oh like a my God. piece of shit camera. The main actor of the film is also the cameraman, and then Mark Duplass is the villain. And they improved ninety percent of the film. And it's a horror Jesus. movie, but it's really well done. It's about uh -huh. it's like about this guy who is 
who is paid to come take care of a person with cancer. Oh. And he starts finding out this guy doesn't have cancer and he's just a f***ing freak oh. show. Yeah, and uh, it's a very, it's an awesome movie if you haven't seen it. Um, but I think that movie ended up making like, I want to say close to $10 million and then ended up with two sequels. Jesus. And the Duplass brothers from there kind of built out themselves out as like mumblecore filmmakers. And, you know, there's all, there's great stories about independent filmmaking like that. But that is one example of like someone who made a very small film and then. So what would your dream be with making a film? Um, to have Sydney Sweeney be a fan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yes. What would my dream be? Uh, you know, Sydney Sweeney. Uh, one of the first things I ever saw her in was Big Time Adolescence, which was a Sundance film. Oh, really? Yeah, and it yeah. was one of the first things. Uh, no, I think for me, I just uh, I've always it's interesting. When I first started doing Fear End, one of the questions I asked all the streamers we had on is like, what would you do outside of streaming? Because mm -hmm. you know, this is a and trap, right? Like, and most of them would look at me and be like, what? Oh. And I'd be like, what do, you, what do you want to do beyond this? And they'd be like, nothing. Oh. And all of a sudden oh. I kind of realized. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You and I are very kind of isolated in our ambition outside of streaming. Oh. Uh, I think for a lot of streamers, like this is the pinnacle. This is what they want to do. I mean, it makes um, sense. But for me, streaming has always felt like I get to entertain and that nourishes me but I always have wanted to do like higher form, more control, bigger projects, um, and that's that's it. Like I, I it, my dream is just to make like my. To, you want my dream? You want yeah. my dream scenario? Yeah. Would be like if I were cast as or got to direct a superhero film one day. Really? Yeah, I think like that would be that would be like the end of the road, and that, like that would just take all my nerddom and bring it like I would love you know they just started talking about this project that I would love to direct if I ever got the chance called Superman Red Sun uh -huh. where Superman lands five minutes earlier and he becomes a, a Russian and like a instead of truth justice in the American right. way he's like communism baby oh interesting uh, yeah it's a really dark story but they've just started flirting with making that and I would love to tell some of those like great deep cut nerd shit that I'm into. I didn't know you know all that stuff. I'm a huge nerd. That's Jason Marvel, Miller. right? That's DC. Oh. <laughs> so DC is Batman, oh, Superman. Right, right. Marvel's pretty Spider -Man. much. Spider-Man. Nope, that's Marvel. Oh. Marvel's pretty much everybody that's not Batman or Superman. Oh, I knew that. You got it. I knew that, I knew yes. that, I knew that. So if you could act, if you could have one role in the entire world, it would be- Booster a, Gold. A booster Gold. Yeah. Who's that? Booster Gold is a superhero that they made in the 80s, and he basically was like a response to like rampant capitalism and consumerism, and he's basically the superhero for hire. He's in it for himself, and he's a, he's a, he's a janitor or a night security watchman from the future who steals a bunch of shit from this museum he works at that's like superhero shit, mm -hmm. travels back in time, and then spends all of his time trying to convince people he's better than Superman so he can make more money. Why are people saying Booster Gold is Green Lantern? Booster Gold is not Green Lantern. Why are they saying that? I don't know why they're saying that. Oh. Hey, you guys are stupid. Green Lantern is, is a different character. Ryan Reynolds. He has, he has a lantern ring and he's part of the Lantern Corps. Uh, Booster Gold is... Uh, oh, they're saying Green Lantern is a group of people? Yeah, the Lantern Corps is basically s space cops. Oh, so Booster Gold was a space cop. No. What the know. frick, Chatter? Booster Gold Bantam. is, is literally Someone just a, 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 like a very selfish guy uh -huh. with super stuff who's like trying to make money and then he, in spite of himself, becomes a better person. My dream role would be Harley Quinn. Sure. Or <sighs> Regina George. <laughs> that would be. Great. I think that's all I could do. <laughs> that would be great. I think I could only do Mean Girl or Crazy Girl. That's all I've got. That's all I've got in me. Um, I have this next one is kind of fun. Sure. It is what do you have a specific Fear and episode that is your favorite? Oh yeah, the Kikarumi episode where we we're all wearing PJs. It was what? so cute. What's that? Which one? When we were the all one, wearing the PJs. The ones that you got from yeah, Japan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was your, but that's, that's the episode that Austin experienced so much trauma. Was it? Because he brought the sticker. He didn't cry that time, but he gave me the sticker. 
That was the root. That was the root of the oh, trauma. That was the root of the trauma. Well, I didn't know it at the time. Do you um, do you have a creative process? Like, um, do you ever feel creatively drained, or what do you do to spark new ideas? I, I will be honest. This is this is ego, Andy. I have never felt creatively drained. Really? I feel like I am an absolute wellspring of ideas, and mm -hmm. I almost am like an idea doctor for a lot of my friends. Oh, they really? Will, well, they will bring me their process, and I will fix their projects. Oh well, you watch the show today. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what to fix, and then I won't do it. No, I don't have. I think I think for that gift, uh -huh. I sacrificed the ability to read and write. So. <laughs> okay, that's fair. That's fair. But you've written movies. Yeah, but you know that takes me like half a year, and like I have like a lot of revisions, and I have people helping me. The good thing is, I am a person who can't spell in an era where spelling is obsolete. That's true. With Grammarly, and now yeah. you have AI. But if I have to ever write something handwritten, oh, it's ugly. It's bad. yeah. I have bad handwriting too. It's bad. So how do you like? How do it? What do you? What do you do when a new idea comes up? Wait, we never even finish. I'm going back. Okay. Your movie was Seer. Yeah, the and intro Finn. film. Yep. What would you do with it? Uh, whatever. I, I, you know, we we had we, our original. We had so many ideas. We had an idea to do to like rent a spaceship set, and basically like have a, a, a film where a guy is like talking to his partner and then finds out that there is no partner. He's crazy, or like we wanted to do like a zombie version of streaming. Um. I also have always wanted to do a story. This is a horror movie I wrote a long time ago uh -huh. that I would love to make where basically a um, a young person uh, tragically takes their lives and their sibling starts investigating why and finds out that they've been watching this one creator that's like a Logan Paul type mm -hmm. um, and decides that they want to reach out to this creator and be like, I think your content influenced my sibling to hurt themselves. Hmm. And the, they cannot get a hold of this person. Yeah, it's XPC, he's further, like, I'm busy. They fur no, but the further they dig, uh -huh. no one can get a hold of this person. Yeah, that's and XQC. And all these references to where they are or public appearances, he finds out he can't really find any. He can't find any of the people in the photos. He oh. can't find anybody around them. And he starts tracking down this creator more and more. And what he realizes is that this creator is a sentient AI that is mm. now undertaking controlling the world. And what the AI realized is if you had like omnipotent int intellect and you wanted to control humans, would you appear as a god or would you appear as a total doddering fool like Donald Trump or Logan Paul? Mm -hmm. And they, they use this like social media persona of like a very lowbrow creator to control the youth and influence them in super negative ways. And as he's getting closer and closer to it, the AI goes into its final phase where it starts convincing large scale swaths of the population to kill themselves Jesus. or basically enact anarchy. And the world starts going into an apocalyptic landscape as he's ne like nearing this omnipotence, mm -hmm. omnipotence and it's like all things like people just doing dumb challenges to kill themselves. It's like almost like Slender Man, but more convincing. Yeah. It'd be like a, like a cult. Like a, that's, that is really interesting because if cult leaders can get people to kill themselves, AI definitely could. Sure, exactly. Yeah. And would they show up as a god or would they show up as like Jojo jo Siwa? Yeah. Oh, that'd be sick if Jojo Sweet. That's yeah. that's what I want. I want it to be like a little girl influencer who's like convincing <sighs> people to do horrible things. Like an extra Emily. Yeah, like W stab. Yeah. You know what I mean? W stab trend. Give your friend one good stab. Put it on the internet. What is that? We just saw we saw a scary movie trailer about a a imaginary friend that slowly dares you to like stab your hand or whatever. Ooh, I don't know if I've seen that one. What is it? Chat, do you remember? It's the one with the bear. I think it's just called Imaginary Friend. Anyway, it'll be out. Imagine, it's called Imaginary. Yeah. It'll be out soon. But no. that's that's one of the screenplays I wrote. I, I have a bunch of screenplays that I kind of cooked up and like different treatments and like different phases of. But if you make you make this film, whatever mm. it is, you try to sell it or you just try to do a no. premiere? 
that. I really? make it, I make oh, it on my own from this, point, he doesn't from, want from this point. Like if I ever get the rights to They Hear It Back, I'll just make that film. Is there a way to get that back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have you been working on it? No, I sold it. I sold it to Blumhouse. Yeah, but have you been working on trying to get it back? No, it's one of those things where it just lapses after a certain amount oh, of time. Oh, how think long they have it, I think they have it for like five years. Oh, so you're getting close. Yeah, but uh, They Hear It is like the best thing. It's, it's, Quickly, it's a it's a group of kids that go to. You don't have to be quick. What do you mean? Oh, well, it's a group We're of kids chilling. that go to a planetarium, and there's a listen to space exhibit. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever seen those. Yeah. But like the black hole is like, and it's all these. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it's like targeted, and he's getting bullied, and the bully pours soda on his head, and the up. the mic points to like a dead area of space, mm -hmm. and he hears something from beyond, which. For the viewer, I'll tell you, it's Azathoth, the blind sleeping god from H.P. Lovecraft's mythos, which is like, if you really get into it, there's a group of, you know, creatures that are constantly lulling him to sleep because if he wakes up, his dream is the universe and will blip out of reality. Whoa. But that, that, uh, that sound causes him to become the harbinger of kind of this like, um, uh, space horror. And he starts like, getting children to join him by playing this frequency that only kids can hear. So all the kids in town can hear this like awful noise kind of all the time and, and the parents are uh, like immune to this. Um, and he basically starts make, taking all these kids and at the end he makes like a, like a human speaker, which is like a blob of children that uh. like, is just projecting this sound. Yeah. They're really fucked up. That is fucked up. That's yeah. pretty fucked up. Yeah. So you you make it and then you just like how how do you get people to see it? That's what I don't understand. Like when you make your own film, if you're I mean not that's the nice it. thing about having a platform now, right? Okay, so people that's yeah. But how do you get it into like AMC or whatever? I I wouldn't care about that. Really? No. Oh, interesting. I thought that's no. like what you. I thought that. So yours isn't about. I think at this point, I'll be honest with you. I think mm -hmm. at this point, if I were to do a feature length film, mm -hmm. put it on YouTube and get a million views on it. I think the money of Hollywood would come to me. I think then they would actively seek me out. I see, so you wanna to get to a point where they care about you. I think that is the way to do almost any entertainment venture is what I've learned. Now? Is any time that you are like asking for money or seeking money, you're always at a, a position of negotiation where you're on the back foot. Mm -hmm. Anytime a brand or dollars come to you, you own that situation. Oh, right. Yeah, no, I've never thought of it like that. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, I didn't think of that. So do, are you just laying there and then these ideas come to you or what happens? Uh, so I always have like threads of ideas. I'm also a lucid dreamer. Oh, really? Um, yeah, and I do this thing that Caroline fucking hates where I lucid dream better if I set the snooze button for 10 minutes. So sometimes when I'll wake up, I'll do snooze for like 50 minutes. And Wait. she'll get so livid. Oh, because then you're half asleep. Yeah. So then do you wake up and write down your ideas? Yeah, I used to. So I used to dream journal when I was in like high school and college. But now I'm better at kind of like just remembering ideas and jotting down the essentials on a notepad on my phone. I see. That's interesting. Yeah. I, I would, if you were to cast, I guess this is my own question. If you were to, okay, you're casting a scary movie. Sure. You have to have... The, the, what are the tropes? Uh, what are the traditional the, tropes? The virgin, the nerd, the jock, uh, the scream queen, the anti-hero. Okay. I'm going to make a notepad here. Sure. So you have to cast streamers in these. Okay. So you need to so cast. Not Sydney Sweeney. <laughs> so yeah, no Sydney Sweeney, unfortunately. Who yeah. is your, let's start with who is your jock? <laughs> Uh, like actually, Ludwig actually, Ludwig Ogren. No, but like actually, like if you think they could do that, they could act and they could, like, and they would actually fit the role. Like, be a casting oh, director here, genuine. God, streamers are not the best actors. I'll keep it a buck. I believe you. it. Um, honestly, I think Ludwig would do a good job. Really? I do. Wow. I think Ludwig would do a really good job. He's a good actor. Okay. Ludwig's in. He's got the jock. So there's, wait, the jock, the virgin, the scream queen. The slut. The slut. 
Yeah, there's always the slut. The there's Scream Queen is you can change that to Soul Survivor. Okay. I think. The nerd? Yeah, always a nerd. Um the Soul Survivor. What else? Um Chat, do you guys know him? That's a lot of them. Anti-hero, that was the one. Yeah. Oh, the stoner. Stone stoner is like usually the nerd. That's okay. like a that's like a hyphenate. Okay. I think there's also the sacrifice. Um, there's also the harbinger, which is the person that tells you you're gonna get fed up, but that's like a much more minor role. Okay. Um, all right, we'll go through. Okay, we'll do this. Okay. Okay, so the jock, you have Ludwig. Yes. Uh, who are you getting? Who are you putting on the Virgin? Oh, there are some good. Uh, Ray would make a really good Virgin. So this is. What kind does that of, mean? So the Virgin is like your pristine character that's usually your sole survivor. Okay. That the audience just immediately likes. Usually they're usually they're like, kind of being like pursued by I, either the jock or the stoner or the nerd. Okay. Um, and usually it is their kind of like pristine and virginal like person that protects them from evil. Okay, right? so Rey is like like a goddess. Well, she's your sole survivor. Okay, so wait, so sole survivor and virgin are the same or different? The, the, a lot of times those are like a hyphenate. Okay, so we'll put her... I think she'd make a good Scream it. Queen survivor. She's been doing some acting. I would trust okay. Ray being my sole survivor slash virginal character. Okay. Who is who is the slut then? <laughs> slut is tough. Uh-huh. Slut is tough because I wouldn't want to ask anybody to be the slut. What do you have to do as the slut? You gotta be a slut. What does that mean? You gotta make out with everyone? Your tits are definitely coming out. I mean, if are we doing a 90s horror? We're, we're doing, doing like a, can, yeah. a trophy? Yeah, okay. I guess that's what we're doing. Tits gotta come out. Uh-huh. You got you have to get like obnoxiously drunk in one scene. You have to have an absolute reckless abandon towards danger. So like they're the ones who are like, Steve, is that you? Oh, right. Okay. I'm showering. Stop yeah. playing around. Okay. Stop. Yeah. yeah. Um <laughs> I think extra Emily would make a great slut. No way. No way. You think? <laughs> For the sake of the film. Okay, extra Emily is our I slut. think she has like a good ditzy energy that she could bring to that role. Okay. And I think she's a good actress too. I've never seen her act. I think she could pull it together. Okay. By the way, this is not me saying that she, she is. She thinks extra Emily is a no. slut. No. This is me casting her in a trope. If she sees this clip, no. How... Extra Emily, you're a slut. I think you're incredible, extra slut. Emily. You're an incredible slut. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, okay. What about the virgin? Oh, we already did that, yeah. right? That was supposed to... okay. The nerd. That's Seer. Seer's the nerd. Hundred percent. Why? Easiest casting of my life. Why? He can just hit, hit like that's the he is he's my that's the comic relief that's your person who probably dies the most brutal death. And I know Seer's the best actor on the platform, so easy. But Seer always turns into evil, like when he does acting. He always turns into some psycho, weirdo, when he does I, acting. He, he could. He You're going to keep him as a nerd? Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. What about the anti-hero? I think that's a myth. Okay. What is What does that anti-hero entail? It's like the person who's like kind of frumpy, maybe leaves early. You kind of suspect that they might be the killer, but they're not. Maybe mm. they sacrifice themselves. Okay. Yeah. I like that. The sacrifice. That's kind of the same thing. Okay. The I, villain. So the villain for this. I is guess there's someone... two villains because there's like a villain. There's like the mean person because there's always a mean person, and then there's like the murderer. Yeah. Okay. So let's go with the villain first. Well, I think the vi so this is like the mean person in the film. Yeah. Like you know how there's always that one dickhead that's like. Shut up, Chad. Like, That's usually the jock. Oh, That's really? Like the, yeah, the jock oh, is okay. usually like the the real sh. I took the jock as the dummy. No, okay. the jock is usually a sh bag okay. too, and he'll usually fuck the slut <gasps> at one point. <laughs> Emily, that's messed up. I mean, we're just talking in, in okay. movie tropes. Okay. Okay. Sure. So I guess then, then the, the actual villain. Yeah. So the murderer. So the murderer is someone that you will suspect first. Uh -huh. And then you will alleviate that suspicion. Okay. And then you will be suspicious of them again. Okay. So usually it's someone that like you put in the relationship with the virgin because you're like, ah, 
uh, it's got to be the boyfriend. And yeah. then they'll like die or something. And you'll be like, oh, it wasn't the boyfriend. And then they'll be like, just kidding. It was pig's blood. Like in mm, stream. Okay. So who's like a hot streamer who you would in, uh, immediately be like, oh, it's got to be him. And then, hmm. Chat really wants it to be Jerma. Jerma. Yeah, it's they're Germa. saying Germa. I okay, like Germa's that a lot. the murderer. Well, Germa is a murderer, so he could he could play from experience. The sheriff. The cop? Mm-hmm. Uh who would make a good cop? I think there's one. Northern answer. Line. What? Oh my god, I didn't even think of that. That's way better. I was thinking, of course, S fan. No, Northern Line is such Northern a good cop. Northern Line is a good cop. Him just being like fing teens. Always getting killed. God damn teens. Did we miss anything? I think that's mostly it. That's a good movie. Yeah, I like that cast. Hell yeah. All right. I'm well, all right with that cast. He'll, he'll, he's going to put it to work at some yep. point. Okay. Okay. Let me get your next question. Sure. Um, this one's fun because, well, you're, are you much of a music guy? Yes. You are? Okay. Huge. Standard on the desert island with one vinyl on a record player for the rest of your life, which one would it be? Daft Punk Discovery. Really? It's the best album of all time, in my opinion. Why? What was the first, what were you doing the first time you listened to it? I was 13 years old. I had just left the Grand Rapids Record Exchange and I was headed to Camp Henry in Nuevo, Michigan. And I listened to it over and over and over and over and over again. Were you alone? Was I alone? Yeah. Uh, no, I was at a camp. Well, I didn't know if you like, you know, like no, I'd Discman or whatever. I mean, honorable mentions, I'd go with Floating Points and Pharaoh Sanders' Promises. Um, but that's not really an a album. It is just one long song over the course of an hour. Incredible. Um, what other albums would be in kind of my honorable mentions for one that I could just listen to? Um, Se uh, Seattle by um, Disclosure. Such a f bonfire album. Uh, what other ones just are like so unbelievably good every song oh Fleetwood Mac Dreams oh that's a good one that's I can a, get behind that's that that's a fire album I like that one I like that one um, okay what about what is your proudest moment as a streamer proudest moment as a streamer yeah <sighs> Have you ever like stood back on your day and been like, that's the one? Hmm. It's a hard one. It's hard to feel proud sometimes, I think. I don't know yeah. what that feeling is. I'm trying to think of like a moment where I was just like, you, you did it, kid. Uh, just ironically enough, uh, it's something that I don't even think was like a very good stream. Um, but, uh, Getting to level 100 in Hardcore Diablo was, really? so, was so hard. It was so hard. That's funny because you've done like a lot of cool gigs. Yeah. I, like the I, NFL stuff and yeah. G4 and you're like, no, I got to Diablo. No, because it was just so hard. Um, I mean, things that I'm most proud of is like helping people. Like getting a lot of the messages I get where I'm like, I've made a real impact in someone's life with this silly little thing that I do. You like uh, that? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't like that. Why not? I don't think I d have helped. It's not up to you to decide. I just think they're wrong. <laughs> okay. Fair. <laughs> Fair. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's, um, I think, I don't know. I, I have a hard time with that. I think it's like, you, like, I don't know. I don't know. I have a hard, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Um, how do you take care of your mental health? Oh man, that was a long process for me, uh, kind of being a manic depressive. Do you feel better now? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah? Well, I've, I've worked on it for, I just didn't function for a long time. You know what I mean? Like someone, someone asked me like <laughs> in my chat a few days ago, it's like, when you first started hanging out with Hassan, did you feel like you were getting mogged all the time? Which is like, did you feel like intimidated by how big and attractive Hassan was? And I was like, I thought what about it. What a crazy it. question. And my real answer was like, no, because I wanted to be dead all the time. Like, yeah, I, you weren't I, even thinking. I just I just constantly wanted to be dead. Um, and I would just like, I just had such a fucked up mental place. And, and it took me years to work on, you know, finding a routine 
that gave me clarity and made me feel better or good enough to work on what I wanted to do. And you know, uh, ultimately, the career element of it helped a lot. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that streaming didn't help save me. It absolutely did. Yeah, I, I think it gave you a bit of a purpose. Well, when you move out to Los Angeles and you have all the talent in the world to act and be funny and you cannot find a job and you keep having these kind of start and stop selling films, acting in films, but not really making money, I, I, I knew when it started to kill me when I knew my, my mother had lost faith in me. What? I, How did she express that? She didn't. I could just feel it. Really? It was a subtone in her language where it was kind of like for years and years, she's like, we believe in you. Do what you have to do. Stay out there. And it became more and more like, do you think you'd ever move back to North Carolina? And all, and I knew. Like I knew they didn't believe anymore. Wow. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, before that, I just was also a manic depressive. But like it took years of... You know, I go to the gym for two hours yeah. every, every single day. Yeah, I mean, that's really good for I, your mental. Yeah. It really is. I meticulously manage my diet. I sleep 10 hours every night. I um, meditate. I hike. How often do you meditate? Almost every day. Really? I need to do that. <laughs> um, but, like, for me, a big part of that first was getting off uh, Adderall. Oh, really? Yeah, for my ADHD. So I, I realized I hated being on Adderall. I hated just being constantly in an altered state. Um, and then I started doing cocaine, and I was like, oh, this is the same thing. Mm -hmm. I'm doing cocaine every day. Yeah, that um, feels worse, maybe. I think that was like an epiphany for me when I like did my first few lines of cocaine when I was like 16 years old, and I was like, oh, I feel like just like I do when I'm on Adderall. Oh, oh Adderall really? Cocaine. Yeah. Um, now, if Adderall or Vivance works for you, if you love cocaine, keep doing it. No, if I well, not too. But if Adderall or Vivance <laughs> works for you, like don't change your routine based on my opinion. This is just what works for me. Uh, mental health is not a catch-all. These are my experiences. Um, but yeah, I, I weaned myself off uh, Adderall, and then I experienced some pretty brutal losses. I had a lot of friends die. I had a lot of family members die. And um, the last of which was right when I was starting to find some success in Los Angeles, a friend of mine named Dave, who's a really good buddy to me in college, uh, hung himself. And I flew out for that funeral, and we were all still so young. Mm -hmm. And I was with a lot of my closest friends, and the, the funeral was just brutal. And talking to his mom, it was pretty evident that she blamed herself. And I was like this yeah. 20 two-year-old kid trying to reassure this woman that it absolutely wasn't her fault. And, uh, you know, the thing with my sadness was I would I would always rebound. I'd go back and forth. I would come yeah, back. Yeah, it does that a lot. But after that funeral, I just didn't come back. Yeah. Mentally, I just felt like I was standing behind myself. Um, and uh, I know that feeling. Yeah. And that got really bad. And so I... I got very proactive about like, I can't live like this. And I, I went to, oh my God, I went to therapy. I went to a neurologist. I had my brain mapped, all this and shit. And then a, a friend from high school, a young woman I used to date, uh, saw one of my more cryptic posts and reached out and kind of was like, have you ever tried psilocybin mushrooms? Right. And I was like, no, not really. And she was like, dude, saved my life, swear to God. And I, I kind of was like, oh, yeah, whatever. Fucking magic mushrooms to heal a lifetime of depression. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Um, but a few months later, I was at a, a friend's performance. Um, uh, a musician was doing a show. And uh, his girlfriend had heard through the grapevine that I wanted to do try mushrooms. And she was like, I've heard you want to try mushrooms. I was like, yeah. She's like, tonight's the night, dude. This is going to be awesome. And I was like, oh, OK, whatever. And uh, she found me later. And she was a bit of like a mushroom pixie and a pusher. Uh -huh, yeah. Where like everybody had to, around her had to be high. And she gave me what I can only um, describe as like a hockey puck of mushrooms. But I had never done mushrooms before. Mm -hmm. And they were chocolate. So she handed it to me. Oh, and God, I that's terrifying. Threw the whole thing in my mouth. Huh? Oh, I'm an idiot. Um, and she started laughing, and she was like, "Wow!" And I was like, "What?" She's like, "Missed the big shot." Yeah, and yeah. she's like, "She's like, you're gonna fucking trap." And uh, my friend put on a show, and uh, he is uh, a, an amazing artist, mm -hmm. like a, a Grammy award-winning artist. And I was like front row at this show he was doing at a house, 
and he played this dis disconstructed version of September where um, Earth, Wind and Fire had done a session with him and left their studio bases, uh, like the individual recordings for September. So like mm -hmm. he had, I, I, and he had like the trumpets on one track and, a, oh, wow. and he played like an hour long version of September, mm -hmm. just all disassembled. And you're just high and you're like. I was not high. Okay. I was off the face of the earth. You were in a black I hole. I was okay. in a, a, basically a, running conversation with Gaia. Like I was wow. talking to Mother Earth. Really? I was, yeah, I was like voguing. I, there was a spider monkey at this party. Elon Musk was at this party. Really? It was uh -huh. one of the most surreal experiences of my life. Okay. But, uh, my, my girlfriend at the time uh, pushed one of my friends. And it was, it was amazing because all of a sudden this event that would have given me so much stress and anxiety I was looking at it with like complete clarity. And usually my girlfriend who I would kind of kowtow to or feel pressure from, I grabbed her and I was like, that wasn't nice. What you did was a horrible thing and you should apologize. And this person was not the type of person you should talk to like that. Mm -hmm. She would usually not take that well. But because I How had- How funny. But because I had like no fear in my system, I was able to just say what the truth was. Yeah, and, and I was able to ad ad like adequately articulate so many things in my life all of a sudden. Cool. Where I was like, my, I don't have a relationship with my father. Mm -hmm. Like, I need to fix that. We've never talked about my grandmother's suicide. Like, all mm -hmm. of these things. And that was kind of the effect that psilocybin had on me. And it's the effect that psilocybin has on a lot of people, mm -hmm. where it is emotional truth serum you all of a sudden those tumblers that make up your emotions fall into line and you understand cause and effect of your trauma. The problem is you understand cause and effect of your trauma. Yeah. So I think a lot of times people who have bad trips aren't ready for that level of emotional yeah. acuity. I've been and told to avoid them. <laughs> you cannot put that toothpaste back in the tube. Mm -hmm. Let's say, for example, you take mushrooms and realize, I don't love this person that I'm with. Yeah. You can never on know that. That sucks. Yeah. It is a truth that will stay with you. Yeah. And so I swear by psilocybin mushrooms, there's a reason that they have gone from like this boogeyman drug that people were like, you could die doing mushrooms five, 10 years ago to being a decriminalized substance to start getting legalized in certain areas. I think on a 10 year timeline, you will see mushroom distribution at dispensaries at the same rate that you see uh, marijuana as, really? a, as a medicinal tool. Whoa. Yeah. We'll see. We will see, everybody. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, all right. I'm we're ready to play the game. I'm ready to play Are the excited? game. Do you want to speed run some? The questions? Yeah, I can just speed run some I mean, you've for got subscribers. like 500 questions. What do you mean for subscribers? This speed, isn't anywhere special. <laughs> okay, speed, speed run. Speed okay, run. we're going to speed run a few. I'll just do, I'll yep. just, do you have any travel plans? Uh, yes, I want to go to Japan with Hassan. Will you finally show Hole on this show? Yes. What is the craziest thing you've done? Ever? <laughs> yeah, that's H their question. Hung from an overpass. Oh, why don't you love us? I do. If you could live anywhere, where would you live? Japan. What's your love language? Uh, acts of service. How is Caroline doing? Great. <laughs> Favorite anime? Uh, be Cowboy Bebop. What are you, who are your top prospects of the Jets draft? Um, Jets draft or draft overall? I think Romo Duzier is a cr uh, criminally slept on receiver. Um, I think the Jets will take Talisi Fuaga, but the Jets interviewed quarterbacks, which makes, which makes me think if one of the top QBs slip, they might make an offer at him, or they're doing that to make other teams think that they would take a quarterback, in which case, if a quarterback slides to them, they will use that leverage to trade out of the 10 spot, trade down, acquire draft capital, and then go get an offensive lineman and a wide receiver. Yard son or wine about a daughter? Wine about a daughter. Yay, how do you feel about being a Red Carpet host? I loved it. Favorite bad movie? A Conan the Barbarian. Does seem great. Okay. <laughs> a bunch of them were just, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, do you prefer Milf Manor or Love is Blind? Milf Manor. That's what I figured. I don't know why we need to ask that question. All right, we're going to play our game now. Thank you, chat, for helping us with those questions. Woo! You guys are so great. Good job, good job, good job. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Welcome to the show. What honestly. a nice view. Yeah, it's pretty good. Oh, hi, chat. 
They're pretty good. I can see you, all my little babies. Uh -oh. oh, there goes the light. Oh, no. <laughs> it's dark in here now. It's spooky. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, listen. She's does her best, okay? At the end of the day, she That's does her all best. right. We are playing a game today. Yes. You just joined OTK. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. So now I'm here to start some drama. Okay. okay. Oh, jeez. So this is where the drama begins. Okay. And the fun ends. All right. So this is a game where you have to decide some things about some people. Oh, I'm so bad at this. Starting off easy. Most likely to end up in the friend zone. <laughs> Wait, with me? Suck. No, just in general. Because I've been trying to this little I know, cucumber. I'm sorry. For a long He's time talking about now. Hassan if you can't see. In general? Yeah. In their life. Yeah. <laughs> He's putting a lot of thought into this. Why NMP? I think NMP will never admit to himself that he is like an attractive lion of a man. Aw, that's turned nice. He went nice with that one. I think Nick is way hotter than he gives himself credit for. Obviously, he's in a very committed, loving relationship, but if he were ever to find himself single, I think he would have a hard time dating. Wow, okay, all right. Most likely to run into a former lover and not remember their name. Okay. Yeah. Easiest. Okay, that was Hassan. Easiest yeah, one that, was, life. that didn't really. Hassan in the Definitely. in the late two thousands. Uh -huh. Hassan was fucking. Was he? I mean, I'm gonna tell you right now. In, in, in two thousand ten to two thousand and twenty, there was a lot of fucking going around. Really? Yeah, like Wilt Chamberlain numbers. That's. I don't like that. Yeah. I don't like that. I'm sure he had fun. Most likely to blame their shit personality on their zodiac sign. Mm. Just a light one. Ooh. Do, 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 do. What? No, me? <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. That's it's Austin's Austin. Show. It is Austin. Austin would like definitely do something shitty and be like, what do you expect? I'm a, I'm a Gemini. Yeah. 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 He's just a Karen. He's yeah. just born that way. He is way. a Karen. Whose parents are the most disappointed in them? Whose parents are the most disappointed in them? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> that is tough. Oh, man. I don't know a lot of these people's parents. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, golly. This is a tough one. I, I think almost everybody here. Uh-huh has very supportive parents that love them. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give this to NMP because he <laughs> personally has told me that his mother is not the biggest fan of his yeah. streaming career. So, he has said that. But I know his dad is, and I'm only giving that there because that's a, that's a tough one. Yeah, that is a tough one. I think this one's easier. Most likely to commit a hit and run. Most like, oh, that's actually Emily. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but it'll be great content when Miss Kiff streams picking her up. <laughs> that was a little too. Bail. That was a little too easy. I don't know yeah, why that was so easy. That one. Okay. That was easy. We we agreed on that too quick. Uh, most likely to purchase a mail order wife or husband. A mail order wife. Oh, that's Chance Morris. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or a downloadable one. Yeah. Yeah. But he's very happy in his. He is happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's happy. He's got boy birds now. now. And he's a, a dog. He's a different guy. He's got birds and a dog. Yeah. Most likely to marry for money. That's Miss Kiff. What? Why? I think this would just <laughs> marry a rich woman for cash. <laughs> okay. All right, fair. Austin? Nah. Austin loves his twinks too much. He also, Austin likes being the provider. Yeah, he would yeah. have to find a very wealthy twink and I... I don't think. No. I don't think there is one. No. Um, if we were all stand-up comedians, who would get the least amount of laughs? A 
That's a hard one. I think every person on here is funny. What? I have to give that to Emmy. <gasps> and it's not because she's Why? not funny. It's because she's I a pretty woman? I think she, I think, no, I think she'd get very nervous. And also she's a pretty woman that always cuts laughs, but I think she'd get nervous about having to do stand up. Stand up is brutal though. It is. I hard. think everybody here would have a hard time with stand up. Except for Nandre, he can kill it. You don't think Seer? I think Seer would get nervous. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Also this guy, he's got a different mode. Well, he's done it before. Ludwig's got that different gear. Um, most likely to sell out their family and friends for fame. Ludwig? Why? He made a video recently that... <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, most likely- You made the board! I didn't think it would backfire on me. I'm not on the board. <laughs> oh, sorry. Most this is a joke, by the way. It's a this joke. This is a joke. It's a joke. Most likely to call out their own name when they orgasm. <laughs> Austin. Come on. <laughs> That's an Austin show. <laughs> Are you ready for the showgasm? <laughs> This one seems kind of easy. Sure. Who will be the first person to try virtual reality sex? Oh, Tecton. Really? Yeah. Over Soda? Soda's in a relationship. I know, but he's probably- Tecton is gonna be an early adapter. I feel like Soda has already had virtual reality Tecton sex. Tecton is in a committed relationship with half the cast of Honkai Star Rail right now. Okay, I see. Not Pom Pom though, right? No. Okay, good. Pom Pom? Oh God! <laughs> I know, I'm just checking. Why did you say that? Most likely to follow through on a revenge plot. Caroline Kwan. Why? She'll get your ass. Go queen. She doesn't forget. Pop off, as she shouldn't. No. She forgives, but she doesn't forget. She forgives, she forgets, but she never lets she's it a, go. She's, she's a tough chick, too. I believe it. Who has the largest porn collection? The largest porn collection? Imagine co collecting porn in 2024. Who collects porn anymore? I don't know. I wish Fan Fan was on here. Yeah, that makes sense. That'd make a lot of sense. Um, porn collection. Yeah. N Nicholas Pollum. Why? Feet? Feet. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who thinks <laughs> this one's rough? Okay. Who thinks they're more attractive than they actually are? Oh my God! I'm not. I'm not making it easy on you. Oh my God! <laughs> it's here. It's here. This is the game. This is the game, everybody. This is so. I said I was here to ruin relationships and start drama. Okay. Well, the women are out because you'll just get canceled. Well, they're beautiful. Yeah. And they're beautiful. The gay is out because it would actually hurt his feelings. He will cry. <laughs> yeah, he will take it seriously. Austin's out. It will be, uh huh. Uh, this is <laughs> horrible. <sighs> this is horrible. You can wait. Do you want to skip it for now? This is not nice. It's the game is called Bad People. I'm going to give this to Hassan. Okay. But only because of his emo TikToks. <laughs> that where everybody, where everybody's like, oh, Hassan looks so hot as an emo. He looked like dog sh emo, okay? Every other time I've seen him, he's a 10. He's the oh, most beautiful no. man I've ever seen. He's a Chad, oh. he's an Adonis, but it just doesn't work. You can't be like gaunt little femboy Hassan. It just doesn't work. He's gonna be really sad about that. I've already told him he looked, I texted him when he, sh I was like, dude, Dude, your TikToks made my balls hurt. The the week you missed the fear and he came in the room to surprise me with his outfit, and I was like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, this is like, it was Why very are you sad. Doing this? It was really sad. But who was the last person to masturbate? Not S fan. He's streaming too much. True. He's thinking about it. Extra Emily. What? Why? 
She's been working out a lot. Okay. When you hit the gym a lot, you get horny. Really? Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Now we know. Okay. For sure. I would have thought. No, building up your legs makes you uh -huh. way hornier because you have what? you have so much like um, what should we call it? Uh, Lactic acid. No, like your testosterone and estrogen. Uh huh. Just starts pumping. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Hormones. That's the word. Most likely to have sex with their cousin. <laughs> He's from Ohio. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking. He is from yeah, Ohio. Is, that goes to Seer. That does go to Seer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most likely to creep a new love interest for several hours. Social media. That is actually yours to hold. Why would that you is say actually this to yours me? to hold. Why? You are in that one. Why? You wouldn't. Why? <laughs> I feel like you're a person who would do a little stalking. Just like healthy stalking. Of course, healthy because, stalking. Because like, gotta you would meet someone and you immediately be like, I have to make sure this person doesn't murder me to death. I feel like you have well, that. Well, and I need to know who their what their last girlfriend looked like. Okay, of so course. I'm not so I'm not wrong on of this course. one. Of course. Okay. And I gotta see what their friends look I like. Had to I give gotta, you, gotta <laughs> see if they have any pets, you know. I had to give you one. I feel like that. I have a feeling I'll get more than one, but No, that's I feel like that's you. I take this. I I strive. Most likely to murder their spouse for insurance money and get away with it. <sighs> So pretty much who can get away with murder? Who can? Yeah, they got away with it. They murder and they get away with it. You? I'd get away with murder in oh, a second. I hate that. I would never, <laughs> I'm a very good liar. Uh-huh. But are you a good cleaner upper? Yeah. But if I had to pick someone on the board, uh huh. I feel like Asmund could get away with murder. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. I feel like Asmund could get away with murder. Why? I feel like he would be just very calm and collected about it. I think he'd do a bad job cleaning it up. D Fuck. <laughs> You're right. At his house. Yeah. Give it back. Okay, yeah. All right, all right, okay. You bring up a good point. Yeah, I just don't. Caroline. Yeah, that's kind of where I was leaning. Look, you guys could play like a game of Mr. and Mrs. Smith where you both are yeah. trying to murder each other. Yeah, true. That's kind of fun. Who can get away with it? Caroline always is like, you know those like s little spousal games or like relationship games where like someone's like, if I attacked you, do you think I could hurt you? Uh -huh. She'll always ask that stuff and she'll be like, if we got into a fight like where only one of us could live, do you think like you could kill me? And I'd be like, yes. And she's always like, no, like, you think if you had to kill me, you could kill me? And I'm like, absolutely. And she's always like, no. I think you could. I don't think it, I don't think it, I, I love her, but I don't think it'd put up much of a fight. Well, I feel like, do women just always do those like hypotheticals where they're like, if we're in a zombie apocalypse and I get bitten, would you let me bite you so we could be a zombies together? Yeah. Cause they're like traps. They're all traps. Because you, of course you're like, no, I'm not gonna and let you bite me as a zombie, that's stupid. But if you don't say that, then you don't love them. I mostly, I mostly, these are my problems with hypotheticals. They're mostly ones that come to me in dreams. Like I'll have a dream that like Ludwig cheated on me. Uh -huh. And then I just need him to apologize for that. <laughs> Getting blamed for dreams. I've been blamed for the dreams thing before. Yeah. And it's so, what do I do? You apologize. That's your fault. How? Sorry, I did that. Give me, give me. Most likely to fall for fall for a pyramid scheme. That's us, fam. No. That's us, fam. Which one? I think he'd help a prince from Nai Nairobi. Yeah, he would. He'd be like, "You can come stay on my couch." Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you, we, you just come on my stream. <laughs> The government seized all your assets? That's crazy. That sucks, dude. That sucks. Frick. <laughs> Who leaves the smallest tips at restaurants? I know who I'd put. Uh, Asmund. 
Oh, really? Didn't Asmin? Let me explain. Okay. I'm pretty sure Asmin once upon a time said he would rather tip the chef than the server in a restaurant. Oh, really? Because he thinks that takes infinitely more talent than serving, and he thinks that it is a shame that we don't tip the chef. Does he not realize that they all get the tip? I is that? I don't yeah. Know. Oh. Usually the tip is divided by everyone. No. Oh, well. Well, I, I guess it depends on the restaurant. I but. know that is a quote from him, so oh. that's the that's the reason I've given him that. Okay. Curricular. The restaurant I worked at, they did. If we were all therapists. Yeah. Who's most likely to sleep with their patient? Sir. That's an easy one. No. Why? Why would Sear do that? It's just his, it's just, he, he just got that. you think it's like a kink for him? He's got that Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, okay. That's fair. Or he's, you know. Yeah. He'll help you all right. Hmm. <laughs> I like this one. Okay. Most likely to RSVP yes to a party, but never show up. Oh. <laughs> Oh, soda popping. Yeah. Soda popping. Except for he wouldn't actually fill out the RCP. True. But maybe Melina would fill it out for him. Who would rather win fifty thousand dollars than have their best friend win a million? That's Miz. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> I like when you agree with my face. I just, I just it was instant. I was like, yeah. oh, that's Miz. Yeah. That's yeah. Miz. That's, that's Miz. fine. Most likely to become a liability after eating a pot brownie. A liability? Yeah. Oh, that's S fan. <laughs> oh, that's, that's so. That's so S fan. He's so big. And I don't think he's like ever done anything. No, even the few times he's like drank, like yeah. he doesn't get drunk. He's straight edge. Yeah. And I feel like he would freak out big time. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. Most likely to ask an overweight woman if she's pregnant. That's a Nandre. <laughs> Why? That's a Nandre. Okay. Okay. I could see Austin. He's he's like that. very familiar with his language, and uh -huh. he'd be like, "Is that a baby?" <laughs> and then the woman would be like, "No," and he'd be like, "I'm so sorry, your stomach is so round." <laughs> then he'd go shit in a urinal. Yeah, yeah. Who would be the? Uh, is there a most likely to shit in a urinal? <laughs> no, in no here? we know who that would go to. Bonus round. Uh, who would be the worst phone sex operator? The worst phone. <laughs> Tecto. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine this man? Oh, buck yeah. And then you take your cock out and start jerking it. Oh, I don't yeah. Like it. That's hot. Oh, f yeah. What would you do to my feet? Oh, yeah. Oh, buck yeah. <laughs> the homeless man heard that. Who should be banned from creating offspring? Oh, what? That's not nice. <laughs> These aren't. A lot of them aren't. That's not nice. That's not nice. <laughs> Banned from uh -huh. creating offspring? Yeah. Oh, I think all these people would be lovely parents. Really? Yeah. Give it to Asmund Gold. Yeah. <laughs> I think he'd make a lovely parent, he though. He might lose his baby. I think he'd, I think he'd make a lovely parent. Other than the, the, the house being a kind of a... He loves streaming. But also the house is a little bit of a hazard. And I, you know, he'd have to baby proof that house. He would have to baby proof his house. Yeah. But if he got himself a good trad wife. True. Most likely to have had sex in the back of a taxi or Uber. I mean, do you want the real answer? Yeah. To Sandpiker. Why? Because he's had sex in the back of a taxi. No, I'm just kidding. I was I like, I, can he fit? <laughs> Admittedly. Oh, that's a, so not just the back of a car. Taxi or Uber, yeah. Oh, I, I don't know why so I went a bit so of voyeurism. Because I know both these guys have had sex in the back of a car. But right. it, but they weren't a taxi Have you or not Uber. had sex in the back of a car? No. That's interesting to me. I've gotten head in a car, but I was driving. Yeah, but a lot of people have sex in the back of a car. Really? Oh. Yeah, I think so, right? Yeah, I had sex in the back of an Uber or a taxi? Not an Uber or a taxi, but a car. I'd give it to Hassan. Okay. Still. 
He likes the attention. I don't know. I don't know that he, if he. If, I don't know why I went to the back of the car. That's something that just is rare to me. Why would you get in the back of the car? Because the front of the car is really difficult to have sex in. So is the back. Well, this is my fun story. I was having. <laughs> why wouldn't you just get out of the car and? Fuck? Well, because this. This is. Hmm, I. This is my fun story. Okay. I was working a retail shift when I was a manager and my boyfriend came over to my work and was like, let's have a quickie in the fitting room. And I was like, that's crazy. And then we did that, but it was a lot of pressure. And so he wasn't working. So then he's like, let's go finish in the car. And I was like, all right, I'll take a lunch break. That's hot. Yeah, see? That's dirty girl behavior. I, I like that. I used to be that. crazy. You guys don't know. I used to be crazy. That's dirty girl behavior. Most likely to get a drunk train wreck speech. Oh, to give a drunk train wreck speech at a wedding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can see Austin like making it about himself. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's, that's Austin show. Holy shit. That's absolutely Austin show. He'd be like, their love is so great. I remember when I met them. I oh, yeah. was thinking. That's yeah. very good. Most likely to join a cult. Mm. Extra Emily. Yeah. It, she's do in it for one. Content. Yeah. Iron Forge Gym. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. What? You can call OTK a cult, but you can't call You Iron can't Forge. call the gym a cult? No, the Iron Forge is good. You, cults can be good. It's this. Mormon. <laughs> In their lifetime, who will have the least positive impact on human species? What? Good luck. <laughs> that, this one is just straight up mean. It's too mean. This one's just too you mean. You can do too mean. I'm gonna pass on that one. Wow. That one's just, that one's just mean. He's passed. That's just mean. Who has secretly done something very illegal and gotten away with it? I'm gonna go Seer. Yeah, that's fair. I don't know what it is. I don't know that. I don't know that, I don't know that for sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 Probably embezzlement, if I were to guess. Who is the most high maintenance in a relationship? If you choose Caroline, I will be mad at yeah, you. Yeah, it's over. <laughs> um, I mean, this is t this is hard. Can uh -huh. I be? Can I tell you why it's hard? Yeah. Because all the guys are, are like kind of slovenly nerds who don't need anything. Uh-huh. Like they, they would be happy with a sandwich and a, and a monthly BJ. Uh-huh. So this oh, has- Oh, would they? Yeah, most of them. Okay. But you don't think, who are you looking at? Oh. That's a good answer. Who are you thinking? Well, I was just debating between the women. You were thinking Caroline, weren't you? No. Between the women? Yeah. I feel like Emmy would be easy. I do too. Emily doesn't shower. I don't think she requires much maintenance. Yeah. I don't know <laughs> if Caroline requires maintenance. Let's give it to Austin <laughs> show. Okay. Before I don't have anywhere to go home to. Most likely to go through their partner's phone. Oh, do you have any answer for this one? Maybe my answer is NMP. Uh -huh. Only because he loves reading drama. Like you always see him in the comments of Reddit threads. Okay, I like so that. So that's why I th I think he could go through it for the sake of the drama. I'll take that. <clears throat> I don't think he would go through it because he doesn't trust Melina. I think he'd be like, what's that bitch up to? Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Most likely to talk shit about politics, but doesn't vote. <laughs> I'm going Nandre on that one. <laughs> I could see Nandre just skipping the ballot box one day. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Most likely to fake an orgasm. Ooh. This is only the girls. Fair. I mean, come, come on. Come on. I could see extra Emily faking an orgasm for sure. She's a people pleaser. Yeah. Least likely to perform mouth to mouth resuscitation on a homeless person in need. <laughs> <laughs> That's the easiest one all day. 
He would be so concerned about the clip. Oh! Oh! <laughs> but he would take a tub with him. Yeah, he'd tub with him. He would tub with him. He'd get so stressed. He would. He, he here's the thing. He has a good heart. And he, he does. And he, he would, would he would want to save that homeless man. And he would man. yell for people. He would want to he save that homeless man. He would call 911. Man, but he would be paralyzed with fear. He would think that he would get dengue fever if yeah. he gave that homeless man. I don't man blame him. Mouth to mouth. Most likely to have a naked picture of themselves on the internet. Oh, there's a few answers here, actually. Oh, I've seen a picture of Nandre's sh before. Oh. Nandre has this one sh that he took. Why? That is <laughs> the largest. Why did he do that? The largest poop ever. I don't think I like him. It, It's actually shocking. Uh-huh. And so I think somewhere out there are yeah. probably a picture of like Nandre's balls. Yeah. Okay. Or like his asshole or something. Yeah. Oh, that's gross. Oh, aren't Lud's balls on the internet? They are. That's actually. Oh, a good that made point. that very easy. I forgot about that. His okay. balls are actually on the internet. The story behind that is crazy. Yeah, it is. How they were like, mate, can we post your testes? And he and he was like, no. And they're like, you're a bloody legend, mate. <laughs> Posted. <laughs> yeah, it's Prezzo's fault for sure. We don't like Prezzo. Who gets paid too much for what they do? I mean, all of us, but. Asma. Asma's probably the richest of all of us up here. I do think he is the richest of all of us. I think he's got the most money. I literally, that's how I was thinking about it. I was like, who has the most money of everybody? Asma, Asma's got the most cash. Yeah, yeah, he does. He's very rich. You guys are saying YouTube money? He's got 15 years of- Yeah, Asmin, Asmin turns yeah. over bucks. His ad revenue is one YouTube contract, I'm sure. Who's the least affected by the Save the Children ads? You mean like who? Oh, I'd, like, just, I'd go Ludwig. Why? I don't you think, think he watches them and he's like, ha ha. I just think he'd tune them out. I think anything that isn't part of Ludwig's like world, he can just tune out. Well, he d it's actually a skill, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's very impressive. He doesn't get sad. N yeah, that's fair. He cut, so you kind of backed me on that one. Yeah, you were right. If a private investigator did a background check on all of us, who would be the most unsettling? Unsettling background? <laughs> what? Uh, I don't know, this one's tough. Do you have any ideas on this? Um. I mean, I think Seer. It's the same idea with who's secretly done something very Yeah, he's legal. got a switchblade tattoo on his arm. There's something up with him that we don't know about. Yeah. We've always wondered. Yeah. Well, that's it. So now we know that the worst person in your life is Austin Show. <laughs> no, those are just specific to him. There's just so many that were targeted at Austin. Yeah. And then we've got, we've got NMP and Emily. Yep. That means, Emmy is one of the best people in your life. Now Emmy's you know. very good. She's a perfect human. Emmy, it's hard to say too much negative about that person. Yeah, that is true. This one was pretty funny. <laughs> Yay, people, Drake's in chat. We've done it. That's awesome. All right, I'm here. I gotta, I gotta coordinate. We gotta get our musical performer. Yeah! Oh. All right. Jeez Louise. I got you. Safe. Ooh, that's stressful. All right, everybody. Office drummer, introduce yourself and take us away. Hello, everyone. I'm Office Drummer. Uh, I just want to say thank you to my community before we get started. Uh, Cutie posted on Twitter that she was looking for music streamers, and I just willy nilly threw myself on there. And so many people responded, and it just made me feel so special. And seriously, thank you guys for doing that. Um, that really means the world. We wrote an original song for this. Uh, so I've never played this before. I've never, uh, no one's ever heard it before. So let's freaking do this. Can we get some hearts in the chat for Cutie? Thank you so much for having me. Will, thank you for the shout out. This is really amazing what you're doing for music streamers on Twitch. And uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be the first one. Let's freaking go.
Let's go, chat! Hey, thank you. I just sent everyone over to you, and I hope you have an amazing night, and I hope they all hang out, and you guys better freaking follow them and use your Twitch Prime. One more song. <laughs> One more song. Absolutely. Let's play some Discovery. Yeah. yeah. No, let's play some Daft Punk. All right. Good night, Office Drummer. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, you guys. Take care.